the recording shuru ho gayi theek hai okay thank you okay okay fine sir so we can start the topic now sir it's totally your decision sir because many of doctors has already joined you can notice them sir so i'll i'll request you to start sir you are the link which i have i have come to my uh, the link which i have got shared on my mobile is not working i am sending to okay, my, okay. my family members also right sure sir no i'm not family member but doctors sorry other doctors mm -hmm. just one minute eh let me share so that people can also from right, my side lot of people are there who can yes right. sure sir sure. I think now we should join, eh? Huh? Okay. Yes. So uh, good. So I have to admit everybody now. I have the host. Okay. So a lot of things. Uh, so thank you. Uh, you would like to introduce me first, and we can start a share screen later on. Yeah. Sure. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. With your permission, sir. Sure. Uh, good evening everyone uh, my name is rp singh i am uh, north india head for jb chemical uh, a company known for silakar so first of all thank you very much to all of you for sparing your valuable time and a special thank to dr vivek gupta sir sir thank you very much for giving your valuable time for the evening and helping us in getting lot of informations which i am sure it will be a great interactive session sir it is not a easy job for me to introduce you but let me try we all know that you are a senior consultant practicing at apollo yeah, hospital okay. delhi a lot of qualification yeah. i could see sir uh, md then dm cardiology then fsc fesc fscia ffpsic and uh, fic from france so and you are practicing as a senior intervention cardiologist at indraprastha hospital uh, new delhi sir uh, with my little knowledge sir this much i can tell so i'll request you to start the session for the day sir okay thank you very much for the nice introduction it's always been pleasure to talk and uh, we do regular webinars and uh, corona has given <laughs> a system of webinar rather than seminars and we all know but uh, there is uh, of course we have to live with corona as of now uh, i think i have to mute everybody so i i know you are not the, you are no, you are no longer the host No, sir. I am no longer a host. Can, Now you are the host. I, I can put you can host. anybody, sir. No, I am putting you as co-host. Uh, just a minute. No, no, sir. Okay, sir. There is no co-host in this system. No, no, sir. No co-host. Ah, uh, no co-host. So, should I mute everybody? Should I mute everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. I think everybody is muted except for one. Okay, so thank you very much for the nice invitation. We are going to talk about hypertension and also basically a beta blocker role of beta blocker in high blood pressure. And we have been treating hypertension for a long time. And today is 21st July, say 15 p.m. I just finished a webinar with another uh, that was basically on uh, angina. Started at six and finished at 7:35. So that's why I'm a little late because in between there were two three patients. So I will quickly no, share one, and thank you very much for the nice introduction, uh, R P Singh and uh, the company. As you know, J B Chemical is known more for Metrogel rather than Silakar. But now, of course, Silakar is important. <laughs> Metrogel is is a nobody knows where from it's coming from. Okay, so let me share my screen and uh, so this is a screen which I'm sharing. 
and I hope you can see everything. And am, am I audible well? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so we'll start yes, the topic, and then we'll take some questions. It's a late evening, Tuesday evening. Hanumanji ka din hai aaj, and uh, so we'll talk. This is actually Apollo Hospital, and this is a view. We can talk a little uh, different also. I'll talk with COVID also a little. So this is a view of uh, Hospital Charles Nicole. It's a very fantastic view. And uh, this is actually Roa, France, where I was working with Professor Alan Cribier. So I little I increased the size. And as case, this is the cathedral and this is a small mountain. This is 130 kilometers from Paris and uh, towards, towards the English Channel. So this is where I was trained after working from DM. And I've got a lot of social relationship. And uh, this is my angioplasty. I used to train French doctors. This is a photograph when I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, no, sorry, New York, when Madison Square event with Prime Minister Modi. And uh, this was live. I was there on TV, several program. And uh, I've been knowing Honorable Modi ji for a long time. And this is a recent photograph with my son, who is a doctor now. And uh, this is our cath lab. And this is the first meeting with him in 2011 when he was Chief Minister of uh, Gujarat. So coming on to the presentation part, uh, 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 the topic is affect the beta blocker and uh, we'll talk beta blockers in various usage. Let me tell you the beta blocker was innovated or discovered by Dr. James Black and who got the Nobel Prize because he was the same person who discovered ranitidine, the, the, the acid blocker. So he's a he was a big man and scientist and the, somebody who has discovered beta blockers should be given Nobel Prize. He got the Nobel Prize. So we all know and maybe a lot of people may not be knowing about it. So the plan of presentation will be uh, the effect of beta blockers, overall usage country-wise, beta blocker in hypertension, and then beta blocker in hypertension with coronary artery disease, beta blocker in heart failure, reduced ejection fraction or preserved ejection fraction, Beta blocker, why it is few are still underused. A word about bisoprolol and the word about bisoprolol versus other beta blockers. So this will be my plan of presentation. So coming on to the overall beta blockers, inhibition, how does it work? Inhibition of cardiac functions. It's low, it works at various levels. The beta blocker they works at various levels in the high in the heart as well as in the arteries. It slows down the SA node, which is responsible for initiating the heartbeat. This is what it works at. It increases the AV node refractiveness, slows the ventricle response on atrial fibrillation and atrial tachycardia. So it blocks SA node as well as AV node. So this is one thing. Ribabradine only blocks SA node, but it is blocking at two places. In the artery, it dilates arteries at lower blood pressure. It arteries at lower the blood pressure because it dilates the arteries. It reduces the myocardial contractibility and cardiac output. This is very important because it is using reducing the contractibility and using myocardial contractility and cardiac output. But this is not desirable, but this is desirable, especially in ischemia, angina. It suppresses formation of ventricular arrhythmias. This is a very important concept, and this is anti-arrhythmic medicine also. So it's working at various levels, and therefore, because of its potential to herb help at many places, it is useful in various diseases. So what about beta blocker overall usage country-wise? If you see this, uh, high heart failure, you see beta blocker usage, if you see the red is beta blocker, and this is uh, in blue is ACE inhibitors, and the purple color is mineralocoid, mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist, which is aldosterone. So if you see overall, in uh, North America, India, if you see India, 70% usage in we're talking of heart failure, we're talking of heart failure, we're talking of heart failure, always. We're talking of heart failure usage. If you see this, that in India, 70% beta blocker usage in heart failure, while, while uh, ACE inhibitors are a little less used than this used. So overall, if you see the beta blockers in heart failure, maximum usage is this. Uh, uh, beta blocker as compared to other two different subsets of medicine which are being used worldwide. So that's why beta blocker in heart failure is very much established. Uh, heart failure, if you see the indication wise, loop diuretic, digoxin, is the same thing in various countries. If you compare with digoxin, 
Desoxin was the first medicine to be used in heart failure. Why? Because desoxin increases the myocardial contractility. And I have shown you here that beta blocker it actually reduces the myocardial contractility. Still, it is useful in heart failure. I'll explain to you a little later. So, desoxin increases the myocardial contractility. But overall, desoxin usage here it is desoxin, the, the, the blue color. So, overall, high, the beta blocker is much more used than desoxin in heart failure. And it is having much more usage even than valsartan and cyclobatril, which is a new compound for heart failure as of now. So beta blocker has wide usage overall. So coming on to the topic, beta blocker in hypertension. And beta blocker in hypertension just now. Beta blocker in hypertension. If you see the uncomplicated hypertension, how does it help? It also in complicated hypertension. So it is useful in both uh, Jack Journal, uncomplicated hypertension becomes uncontrolled hypertension, the arrhythmias, hypertension, this is usage. It was published in 2007. It has got potential usage overall. Uh, then coming on to this is how Brunwald textbook summarizes the uses of beta blocker in hypertension. Beta blockers are specifically recommended for hypertensive patients with concomitant coronary disease, particularly after myocardial infarction, congestive arteries, or tachyarrhythmias. If a beta blocker is chosen, the agents that are more cardioselective offer the likelihood of fewer pre perturbations of lipid and carbohydrate metabolism. Long acting formulations are better for once daily dosing. So this is how Brunwald, which is a, a Bhagavad Gita for cardiology. Bronwald medicine is a Bhagavad Gita of cardiology. And uh, this is how Bronwald, uh, we all have done DM with reading Bronwald and other textbook Hurst. What are the physician concerns about adding beta blocker hypertension? Because sometimes it causes worsening of HDL. It is increased APOP, negative effects on glucose metabolism, negative effects on renal blood flow and mast. Sometimes hypoglycemia is masking is done. Tolerability wise, it can cause fatigue, it can cause potency, it can cause weight increase, but from esophagus depression. But these are important metabolic and tolerable issues. But despite this, the role of beta blocker in hypertension cannot be underestimated. Especially if beta blocker is associated, if the hypertension is associated with angina, post MI, heart failure, tachyarrhythmias, and glaucoma in pregnancy. So wherever such things are there, this is European Society of Hypertension Guidelines, that beta blocker should be used primarily. Okay. Okay. So when the, wherever there is a patient who has got hypertension with angina, with post-MI hypertension with angina, heart failure, tachyarrhythmias, you have to use beta blocker in this setting. So there is no doubt that beta blockers are useful in hypertension. This is European Society of Hypertension guidelines. And uh, so that's normally uh, might be used in tachycardia. This is the antidromic. Coming on to the next slide, core drug treatment strategy for uncomplicated hypertension. ACE inhibitors, ARB plus CCB or diuretic, this is first pill. ACE inhibitors, ARB plus CC plus diuretic. This is second pill. Consists of monotherapy and resistant hypertension. You have to use spallactone. But beta blockers consist of beta blocker at any treatment step when there is specific indications, when there is specific indication for their use, heart failure, angina, post MI, I repeat. Normally, if you have an uncomplicated hypertension, the first line of treatment is ACE inhibitors or ARB or cholesterol blocker or diuretic. This is a monotherapy. And you have to step two, you have to add diuretic. Step three, if there's a triple combination, then you have to add spirulactone or other drug. But in, whenever there is associated angina, post MI, atrial fibrillation, or younger woman, or planning for pregnancy, you have to add beta blockers. And there's no doubt about this specialty. Coming on to the next slide, beta blocker in hypertension with CAD. These are so many evidence. The evidence of for a J-curve phenomena calls for caution, especially 
in patients with angina TK with vasoactive drugs leading to low systolic blood pressure, heart failure values. If you see therapeutic strategies in hypertension patients with CAD, class 1A indication target systolic blood pressure to 130 and lower with associated coronary artery disease, I'm talking. Similarly, to target diastolic blood pressure, class 1C blood, uh, indication, in older patients more than 65 years to target to a systolic blood pressure raised to 130 to 40, class 1A indication. If you have a patient with symptomatic angina, beta blockers and CCP are recommended class 1A indication. So this is what is there. Drug treatment strategy for hypertension and coronary artery disease, just to again summarize drug treatment strategy from European Society of Cardiology, published very recently in 2018, 2018. The initial therapy drug combination, first pill, ACE inhibitors always, beta blocker always, plus calcium channel blocker, or CCB plus diuretic or beta blocker, or beta blocker with diuretic. That means when you have associated CAD, you see first pill, you have beta blocker either with ACE inhibitor or with calcium blocker or with diuretic. So beta blocker, you cannot omit. It's even in the first pill therapy, when you have a patient of hypertension with CAD, European Society of Guidelines, if the step two, that means the, that means the hypertension is not fully controlled, then you have to triple combination of the above. And if there's a resistant hypertension, you have to add spiralactone as a treatment of choice or alpha blocker or any other diuretic. So this is what is the idea. That means you cannot miss beta blocker if you have a CAD even in initial therapy. Combine beta blocker with ACE inhibitors, combine beta blocker with diuretic or calcium blocker combined with bidiuretic alone. Coming on to the next slide. Arterial hypertension with associated heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So you can have hypertension with either two. Things. That means in preserved ejection fraction, what is meaning? That means ejection fraction is normal, there's a concentric LVS and there's diastolic LV dysfunction. As to like LV dysfunction. So, in these cases, in such cases, you have to presumptive have the hypertrophy. I have to mute somebody actually. Let me see who is the person. All are muted actually, except for. Okay, coming on to the slide presentation. So beta blocker in heart failure. Am I? Am I, I think I'm audible, no? Be, eh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You yes, are sir. audible. Proper. Audible. Yes. Coming on to the sir. second slide. Beta blocker in heart failure with induced ejection and preserved ejection fraction. As I was showing this slide, uh, this one is correct. Arterial hypertension with reduced ejection. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Actually, new standard has come because we see sometimes diastolic heart failure. Patient is coming to us, patient with heart failure, he has crepitations, but when you do echocardiography, you find a normal ejection fraction. This is what is known as heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. There's a diastolic left ventricle dysfunction, and there is actually diastolic failure. That means there is an inability to dilate the heart, and the patient actually gets pulmonary venous hypertension because of this and volume overload, and the patient goes into heart failure. So in this case, presumptive heart failure therapy, ACE inhibitors plus beta blockers plus lube diuretic, switch from ACE inhibitor to valsartan or psychobatrial, or continue to add statin, switch from traditional beta blocker to vasodilating beta blocker, or add SGLT because there are, there are different type of beta blocker from traditional to vasodilating, or add SGLT inhibitors in type 2 diabetes, add calcium blocker, add spironolactone, add thyroid diuretics, here also the same, add spironolactone, add thyroid diuretics, so this is the guideline from this. And coming on to the landscape at the beginning of 21st century, heart failure treatable and preventable disease. Heart failure is a treatable and preventable disease. So you have to prevent it first. If not, you can treat it. And this is how you do the various trials have for history of landmark trials in chronic heart failure. We all remember SALT, Valsartan, heart failure trial, the SAFE trial, ISS4 trial, consensus trial, recognition of neurohormonal activation, then CBS, Seniors, Comet, Copernicus, Merit Heart Failure, Sebes, Merit, then Medit CRT trial, the role of CRT, which is a device, then Care Heart Failure, Medit 2 device, which is AICD with AICD with CRT device, that means combo device. So many trials have happened showing the landscape utility of beta blockers in heart failure. So, heart failure as such, 
again to repeat direct take beta blocker ACE inhibitors, ARB, calcium antagonist, and aldosterone antagonist. They have been the paradigm in the treatment for heart failure with the various kinds of beta blockers. In the absence of treatment with proven benefit in worsening heart failure, the best strategy is to prevent such worsening. So disease progression is something like this. You start and you exit from the hospital with a cardiac function and quality of good quality of life happening with this. Coming on to the heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. That means you have the patient where ejection fraction, which is, which is found out from 2D echocardiography, is reduced less than 40% or 35%. In these cases, you have to, the building blocks of therapy are found up initially, it is the pharmacological treatment, that means drug treatment, which is, which is of course, we are told that beta blockers and heart failure and ACE inhibitors. Then, of course, ventricular assist devices, CRT, in, and then of ICD, intracardiac cardiac defibrillator. But of course, the main theme is like this, that you have to have all these things plus, and you have to build a block over, over the basically uh, medical treatment, which is pharmacological treatment with beta blocker, ACE inhibitors, and, and of course, MRA. So this is CITD, ICD, CIT, ventricular assist device, and transplant, and transplant. So all these things are actually over and above the basic medical treatment. That means despite transplant, despite ventricular assist device, despite CRT, despite ICD, you have to build the block on the basic, the new henna new. The building block is only on the new, which is beta blocker, case inhibitors and this. Evaporidin and detoxin are later on can be added depending upon the requirement, although evaporidin is a new drug coming up. So what is how it is happening? Myocardial injury leads to vasoconstriction, increased noradrenaline, adrenaline, and BP heart rate contractility, and this is SNS and the RAS and PS. All these things here we have to use at this level. The beta blockers are working here. ACE inhibitors and the RBs are working uh, here. Of course, sympathetic reduction of sympathetic tone that is happening with the beta blocker. So what precedes heart failure? The so chronic heart failure basically is actually preceded by whenever you have high blood pressure for long years. That means chronic hypertension for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, all this can lead to heart failure. Similarly, diabetes, diabetes cardiomyopathy can lead to chronic heart failure. High risk coronary artery disease, that means triple vessel disease, left main disease, uh, ischemic cardiomyopathy. This leads to ischemic cardiomyopathy and chronic heart failure, or LV dysfunction. Mild LV dysfunction can lead to chronic heart failure. This is what proceeds. So, therapy in heart failure reduced ejection fraction is. As I told you, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, mineral cortical receptor inhibitors, cardiac resynchronization therapy. What is cardiac resynchronization therapy? For the people who are not aware that, you know, it's a kind of a, it's an advanced pacemaker with a three leads. Three leads. Three leads means one lead goes into the, of course, the right atrium, another goes into the right ventricle, and third lead goes to the left ventricle, but that, that is through the venous sinus as a branch, which is going into the vein, and on the lateral part of the left ventricle. So this is how cardiac, and then implantable cardiac defibrillator, defibrillator AICD is very important in the patients when you have ejection fraction less than 30%. However, despite all this, five-year mortality remains 50%. Despite all this, the five-year mortality remains Heart failure pharmacotherapy and pharmacotherapy therapy, just to repeat, I've told you, the detoxin is less and less used. Detoxin role, I recently, I had a patient of peripartum cardiomyopathy. With the rare cases, peripartum cardiomyopathy, in these cases, we had to give desoxin. But otherwise, desoxin is out of use now because desoxin can cause fatal cardiac arrhythmias. If the potassium level goes, either there's a hyperkalemia or hypokalemia, which can happen with your, because you are using diuretics and you are using aldosterone intervenes, this is causing hyperkalemia. Or you are, if there is a hyper or hypo, desoxin can be dangerous. It can lead, it, it kill the patient. And therefore, this usage of this oxygen is very limited. But of course, in such, certain cases, we still use it. Then, of course, aldosterone integrist, blood vessel dilator, inotropic therapy, heart pump medications are also there. The full basket of CAD plus CHF is systolic dysfunction. This is the full basket. ACE inhibitors, beta blocker, aldosterone integrist, nitrates, hydrolyzine. Of course, statins are also having shown very important results. Then, of course, aspirin, because these are especially when you have associated CAD. Especially because these statins can cause, uh, they have pleiotropic effect and they can reduce a plaque rupture and conversion of 
unstable anjana, stable anjana to unstable anjana. Imabrazine works at the sinus node, as I told you, it reduces the overall heart rate and detoxin, as I told you regarding this class three and class four symptom, decent acute coronary heart rate more than once. If the patient is class three to class four, you have to use all of them, all of them. Evidence-based use of beta blocker in 2017. Hours to days, if you have acute MI, acute MI, judicious use of beta blocker in patients without contraindication, high risk of shock. If the patient's blood pressure is okay, you can still start. But when you, a few, few months to years, you have to give beta blocker. In acute MI, when there's acute cardiogenic shock, it is contraindicated. But when a few months passes, patient is revascularized, patient is stable now, it's now a few months have crossed, you have to start beta blockers long term. But no, when there is no LV systolic dysfunction, that means with preserved heart functions, the beta blocker long term usage are not very clear. But when you have LV systolic dysfunction, you have to use it because it reduces the norepinephrine related bad effects. So reconciling the guidelines with reality, the desired stage triple therapy, ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, angiotensin inhibitor, target. Tighter to target those of maximum tolerated evidence dose, restless symptom. If you have a NH, NYHA class one, continue triple therapy, NHA class two, systolic heart failure, NHA class two to four, systolic with heart failure, heart rate less than 70, atrial fibrillation. So titration might take several weeks to months depending upon disease severity. The entire triple therapy titration to maximum tolerated or target dose should be completed within four to six months. This is what the study has shown. So treatment of heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. There are nonsense to make a beta blocker. There are two types of beta blockers available, of course, metoprolol, and then of course you have carbidolol, bisoprolol indicated after the general population. No prospective study in CKD in non-dialysis patient. So this is disconnect. Uh, so treatment of heart failure, reduced ejection fraction, we have to have usage of beta blocker always. So evidence-based dosage of beta blockers in high field reduced ejection fraction, beta blockers starting dose should be titrated. And bisoprolol, 1.25 mg OD, it can be going to 10 mg OD, carbonyl, 3.125 mg BD, it can go to 25 mg BD, metoprolol, 12.5 mg starting, it can do 200 mg OD, which is very, very rare. We have never used, we go to 100 mg, of course. But so these are different various types of beta blockers which are available. And normally, when chronic heart failure, we are more inclined to use carbidolol. I will also tell you. I will also. I will also tell you about bisoprolol, uh, how it works and how it is very useful. So this is how it is. Block sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is blocked by beta blockers, and starting dose is bisoprolol for bisoprolol is 1.25 milligram for carbidolol is 3.125 milligram BD. If people have low blood pressure, prefer bisoprolol. Staggering timing with ACE inhibitors, take with meals, slow absorption, take in the evening rather than morning dose, consider, consider decreasing diuretic. So, this is what is happening. If you see, metoprolol is not even available in Canada, it's not available. This is news to me. So, this is how we have to start the dosing when you're using carbidolol. But carbidolol, maximum tolerated dose is 50 milligram BD, and uh, while this is different, coming on to the low blood pressure, tips for optimizing, tips of optimizing. Uh, medications. Staggered doses of ACE inhibitor, ARB, and beta blocker, at least two hours between medications. If you have a low blood pressure, then you cannot give ACE inhibitor and beta blockers at the same time. You should have difference of two hours while taking this medicine. And uh, consider splitting dosage up to BID. And those splitting doses BID, start with low doses and increase slowly to help reduce side effects monthly versus every two weeks. When trying to titrate ACE inhibitor, ARB or beta blocker, consider only increasing the, <clears throat> if, if tolerated, then increase the AM dose. That means evening dose should be, consider only increasing PM dose. This is again a learning. You see, normally, you have, we always have a concern that when you're taking a, any pressure blood pressure medicine, which reduces the blood pressure. And then it is better to give a lower dose in the night. Because during sleep, the patient's blood pressure already goes down a little by 10 to 15 millimeter mercury, both systolic and diastolic. But that is not true in such cases because most of the arrhythmias and bad events are known in the early morning. So this is what they're saying. When trying to titrate ACE inhibitor, ARB or beta blocker, consider only increasing the PM doses, that is evening dose. If tolerated, then increase the AM dose to the next visit. 
use bisoprolol rather than carbidolol. If you have low blood pressure, it's better to use bisoprolol rather than carbidolol. Give beta blocker with meals slow absorption. Consider decreasing diuretic. Consider volume depletion. This is very important. Volume depletion should be done or other medicines cardiovascular other and that can contribute to hypotension or other hypotension. So it's volume depletion means you have to check if we are using echocardiography regularly. When we are facing the problem that uh, what is the best dosage, the patient blood pressure is coming between a 90 systolic or 80 systolic or 96 systolic and you still have to give all these medicines because they have a protective effect at various levels then you have to check that patient is volume depleted or not. How to do that? You have to do echocardiography. Echocardiography will tell you the central venous pressure. It will tell you the pulmonary venous pressure and also it will tell you left ventricular and diastolic pressure. So if your central venous pressure, CVP, is low, that means around 5 centimeter of water, you can give a little more fluid. You keep the CVP around 10. This is possible only if you have a high center placement, tertiary care hospitals. Otherwise, where echo is not available and you have volume depleted patient, that your patient is dehydrated. His blood pressure is low because of volume depletion and you cannot give medicines. So it is very important to do echocardiography in such patient to know the central venous pressure by echocardiography. Mortality in heart failure reduced ejection frequency remains high despite the current available therapies. The average lifespan of heart failure patient is five years. It's very, it's, it's like cancer. It's like cancer. If you're diagnosed with heart failure, the average lifespan, despite the best available therapy, is five years. Ex uh, approximately one in four heart failure patients is re-admitted to hospital within one year of discharge. Prognosis for heart failure patients remains poor with only slight improvement to overall mortality. Chronic heart failure reduced ejection fraction survival rates have improved over time with the introduction of new therapies. However, significant mortality remains. This is something food for thought for all of us, what best to do. This is the reduction in relative risk of mortality versus placebo. ACE inhibitors reduce 16% reduction of mortality. RNA, which is cyclobacteria, which is recently introduced, combination, is reduced 20%. Beta blocker is still 34%. That means if you are giving a patient, it's a very important point I'm telling you, a very important point I'm telling you, that if you have a patient with low blood pressure, lower side blood pressure, so if you have to give the maximum advantage, don't finish off beta blocker, because a lot of people are still inclined to, stu to start a new medicine army. And they would like to, with a, of course, industry uh, pushing and this is a new drug, they feel that this is the best. But rejection mortality with beta blocker is far more than that means don't do discretion don't stop beta blocker you have to continue beta blocker if you can add on to that you add arni but don't to maintain a blood pressure don't stop beta blocker this is what i want to tell you that a lot of people will be able to okay don't give beta, don't give beta blocker give arni but you see the mortality reduction is 20 percent here and 34 percent i hope you understand this point but why beta blockers still underused? This is the final and second, last, third, last point for me. Beta blockers are underused. Underused withdrawal 10 to 40 percent. Related to patient, age related impairments, visual, hearing, cognitive dementia, functional limitations, social support. Polypharmacy, errors in self administration. Patients who are elderly, SA due to drug interaction, change of pharmacodynamics, fiber. Related to physician, conservatism, difference between RCT and real world patient cardiologists to other disease management program, telemedicine. So we have to be, we have to really see and check that blood beta blockers should not be withdrawn once started unless there is a clear cut indication to reduce it. One important reason is of course chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So medical therapy for stage C, heart failure reduced action fraction, magnitude benefit demonstrated in RCT. So as I told you in the same thing, which I showed you just now, 24% reduction in mortality which was shown, so it is the American Heart Association guideline coming from 2012. So the maximum is still, of course, hydrolyzine and nitrates have shown a little higher for the reduction in mortality as compared to beta blocker. That means you have to start, you have to continue this as well. But this they can cause a lot of hypotension. So this is, cannot be used so easily. Especially this medicine, nitrates, they cause hypotension and therefore it cannot be used as a primary drug. Although the maximum mortality help support is coming from hydrolyzine nitrate, but beta blocker is 34%. 
and reduction in re, risk reduction reduction in high field hospitalization is 41 percent maximum maximize beta blocker risk reduction and from reduction in heart failure hospitalization so 34 percent reduction in mortality and 41 percent is reduction in heart failure hospitalization is very useful and therefore it should not be omitted never omit a beta blocker effect of beta blockage on all cause mortality by etiology and nyha class if you see nyha class 2 class 3 class 4 ischemia and non ischemia and you see the relative reduction in in mortality all cause mortality if you see that means the maximum reduction is happening in class 3 and class 2 with the cbs trial merit heart failure trial and us cap trials so all the trials have shown so class heart failure is there a class effect for beta blocker yes you must check the class that means class effect means various types of for example merit heart failure has shown used metoprolol copernicus trial has shown the carvedilol and placebo cbs2 has shown a bisoprolol and placebo and best trial has shown a busindol which is hardly used versus placebo if you see and compare all these trials, that means in Copernicus, Parvidolol was used in Merit Heart Failure, Metoprolol, and CBS2. CBS2, which was published in 1999, was a very long time. CBS2 in Lancet. So uh, was uh, they had a bisoprolol used. You see, the annual mortality reduction was reduced uh, within 15 months, 34% risk reduction, 34, 35, 10. So in all these three, Carvidolol, Metoprolol, and Bisoprolol, there is a similar risk reduction, statistically significant reduction in all cause, in especially uh, in the mortality, risk reduction in mortality 35%. So coming on to the US carbidolol program, Copernicus, risk reduction 35%, mark, same thing, which I've just spoken in the same slide. Now you can see the CBS2, which has used Bisoprolol 1999, Merit Heart Failure 1999. Why we are talking about so many these trials which are 20 year old we're talking about these trials because they are landmark trials number one secondly despite the usage the still it is being underused so we have to really keep on amplifying the effect by repeating what we have been saying since 99 that beta blockers should always and always be used uh, if you compare the treatment modality in for example tertiary heart care center like apollo if you compare with this district hospital or if you go to the villages, many times the patient does not come back to us. Only 30% patient, I would say, are on regular follow-up. 70% they go to the physicians. And when they go to the physicians, there is a likelihood that one or two medicines can be missed out. And then overall, as if you see the overall survival is not good, and if you miss out beta blocker, for example, for any reason, whether it is in compliance of the patient reaching to the physician or physician lack of knowledge, or not knowing the serious importance of beta blocker, he may omit, he may omit uh, the drug, and that will cause a major problem to the patient. This is why we are repeating the trials of 1999. So major placebo control trials of beta blocker supported high failure recovery guide guidelines. So again, the same thing. Patient population they had used uh, 200 milligram daily, 64 percent target dose, 34 percent. The same slide in a different way. Beta blocker treatment according to physician type in heart failure. According to physician type in heart failure, uh, carvedilol, and this is carvedilol, which is published in 2007. So this is again, what about beta blockers for heart failure with reduced mid-range and preserved injection fraction in dual, and especially in preserved, now we're coming on to the role of beta blocker in preserved ejection fraction. In dual patient level, this is a double blind randomized trial, and they have shown that effect of beta across LVF, different LVF spectrum. If we check, that more than 50% here, and <clears throat> more the ejection, this is, uh, this is ejection fraction, yes, less than 20%, and here, the maximum benefit is happening actually here, if you see all-cause cardiovascular death, and uh, all-cause mortality was not reduced. If you see this on the other side, was not reduced if ejection fraction is 40%. While if the ejection fraction is less than 50%, 40 to 45, 35, 39, there was a significant reduction in all cause mortality, cardiovascular death, CV hospitalization, CV death and hospitalization. So if the ejection fraction is fully maintained, that means all 50%, that means the actually diastolic heart failure, beta blockers do not have shown, not have, they have not shown any significant kind of reduction in the mortality or all cause mortality or cardiovascular mortality. So this is a important learning for all of us. Coming on to the bisoprolol. Bisoprolol for whom? Heart failure, post-MI, Hypertension plus CAD, 
hypertension with elevated heart failure. So how is it different actually? So bisabolol is a beta-1 receptor, selective receptor antagonist. No adverse effect on lipid metabolism. As we are telling in the first slide, I showed you that what are, why the, what are the, I will show you that slide again, because that's an important slide. What are the physicians uh, in it? Uh, what are the physicians' uh, uh, hesitation? Physicians' hesitation, sorry. Oh. Yes. Yes. This is actually the slide which shows the physician's concern about adding beta blocker hypertension. It's true for high blood pressure or true for high uh, worsening HDL, increased APOB, negative effects on glucose metabolism, masking of hypoglycemia. Masking of hypoglycemia is a very important thing. People don't understand what is the meaning of masking of hypoglycemia. That means the patient is diabetic and you are on glimpride, for example, and your blood sugar goes down to 70 or 60. And if you are on a non-selective beta blocker, then you will not have the symptoms of hypoglycemia. That means you will not have sweating, you will not have uh, weakness, and if the blood sugar goes, that means the warning signal is not coming, and you will not take sugar, and you may have a severe hypoxic brain damage. So this is what masking hypoglycemia, and of course it can lead to depression, importance is a very important point, weight increase, fatigue. So these are the concern with all the beta blockers, especially which are non-selective. Coming on to the my slide, which I was talking about, coming on to the bisaprolol. Yes, coming on to the few slides. So if you see, bisaprolol is a beta-1 receptor selective antagonist. No adverse effect on lipid, meta lipid metabolism and no adverse effect on glucose metabolism. It is better than etanol, as good as newer drugs, better 24 hours coverage. This is an important point. It is having a better 24 hours coverage, once daily doses, sustained blood pressure control over long term, and no sudden changes during exercise. So, Prisaprolol is the preferred beta blockers with treatment of heart failure and then hypertension under MPP guidance, medical management program. That means, under the good guidance of doctors, it is one of the preferred medicines. I repeat, no adverse effect on lipid metabolism, no adverse effect on glucose metabolism, better than metronol or metoprolol, as good as newer drugs, better 24 hours coverage. Sustained blood pressure control over long term, then no sudden changes during exercise. This is what bisoprolol is. And bisoprolol is the most cardioselective. This is the most cardioselective beta blocker. Efficacy and tolerability of beta 1 selective beta blocker bisoprolol is the first line anti hypertensive in Indian patient diagnosed with essential hypertension. Right there, local level multi centric study, which was published in British Medical Journal by Indian cardiologist. And this was which year, uh, don't find the year here. So they have shown the article focus. The key message, bisoprolol is safe, effective in stage one, as a patient in India. The average dose required was five milligram per day. Target BP was achieved in 95% of patients. This was first ever study done for bisoprolol large Indian population. This was published in British Medical Journal. So sympathetic overdrive happens in the role of beta blockers, bisoprolol versus losartan. So now we are going to show you some, some head-on trials between the bisoprolol and other and other drugs. So losartan is a ACE angiotensin receptor blocker. So they have had on trial in hypertension and they have found that this is uh, mean age 50 and this was published in 2009. And uh, this has shown uh, almost equal efficacy, almost equal efficacy, in fact, in more efficacious as compared to, to losartan, this is important. A lot of people have a feeling that beta blockers are not that effective in hypertension. They have a general feeling. For hypertension, it is mostly ACE inhibitors, or it is ARBs, or it is calcium blockers like amlodipine. But here you see, and, and of course inhibitors. We are comparing bisoprolol with losartan, and it is found in this study, published in 2009, drug investigation, that losartan, if you see losartan is, is uh, orange, what is this color? Not yellow, this is something different yellow. Okay, so blue is it. If you see, it is more platinum. This is more efficacious, bisoprolol, as compared to this. Again, selected trial bisoprolol for sexual dysfunctions. So they have, uh, this is, I think, repeat of the slide, so we don't have to talk about this. Heart failure clinical trials, uh, Comet, heart failure, CBC. Uh, where is bisoprolol? Bisoprolol versus placebo, the CBIS trial. CBIS 1, CBIS 2. These are trials have shown 
reduction in mortality, as I told you, uh, to 30% and 34% with heart failure. Just repetition of the, what I already said. So clinical trials guidelines for treatment of heart failure, you have to guideline just to revise that week one, 1.25 milligram, misoprolol week two, 2.5, slowly titrate. That means you can't give immediately five milligram in heart failure. We're talking, earlier we are talking of hypertension, now we're talking of heart failure, misoprolol. You have to start with low dose. One point four. Similarly, what we are doing in carbidolol. In carbidolol also, we are reducing, starting with, I normally start with 3.25 quarter tablet. Injection fraction 20%. So this is very low dose. Similarly, bisoprol, you have to titrate 1.25 milligram, 2.5, 3.5, 5 milligram. And then you have to do selective beta-1 antagonism with bisoprol is associated with fewer post-operative strokes than atrinolol, metoprolol. Selective beta-1 antagonism with bisoprol, a very important study, 44,000 patients published in 2013. Beta-1 antagonism with bisoprolol is associated with, with fewer post-operative strokes than atrinolol or metoprolol. This is a very important advantage. And then less stroke was observed comparing metoprolol, which is otherwise known as elephant of the, of the beta blockers. I would say maximum usage of beta blocker is metoprolol as a blocker. And this study has shown that bisoprolol is reducing the post-operative, also with fewer post-operative strokes than atrinol. A very important article, I would say, we have to remember this, and this is published in 2009, in 44,000 patients. And then a clinical trial, bisoprolol versus nefetipine. Nefetipine is a, what is nefetipine? Nefetipine is a calcium blocker. It's a calcium blocker which has a reflex tachycardia. It is a one step before amlodipine. Nefetipine is having a huge data for angina, but it causes reflective cardia. So this was a TPS 1995 trial, long time back. Bisoprolol showed marks, marks arcade in rhythm by reducing the morning peak of ischemic activity. So it was statistically superior bisoprolol versus nefetipine. So clinical guidelines for treatment of angina, if you see that, of course, short-acting nitrate, beta blockers, calcium blocker, nitrates, and of course, beta blocker, whenever you have angina, you have to give beta blockers. Which one? This is your personal choice. I've given you some advantages of various, the various of bisoprolol over other things. Heart failure rate reducing effects of bisoprolol in Japanese patients with chronic atrial fibrillation. So this is for sure. This is published in 2013, and they have shown that uh, the overall effect, uh, the the background is this. This is the first quantitative analysis of beta blocker monotherapy in AF patients. Bisoprolol. A dose responsive heart, heart rate reduction when administered. Normally, whenever you think of atrial fibrillation, you either think of calcium blocker, for example, but mostly in dramatic heart disease, reduction, or beta blocker, mostly beta prolol. But this study in Japan, they have published that beta prolol is equally good in reducing the for in heart rate in chronic atrial fibrillation. Coming on to the beta prolol versus carbidolol, it means in patients with chronic heart failure. Carvedilol was the first beta blocker, was the most important beta blocker, which was established in chronic heart failure, carvedilol. Uh, and we are using, as I told you, there was a lot of uh, trials with carvedilol, 3.125 milligram, and this is a study which is comparing bisoprolol with carvedilol. And beta blocker frequently caused adverse effect. What in bisoprolol induced demonstrable improvement in pulmonary function, caused less adverse side effect. This was a result of this uh, uh, 2011 study published in respiratory medicine. So, uh, coming on to the bisoprolol versus other beta blockers, I was already told you the Japanese experience: hypotension, bradycardia. If you have hypotension and bradycardia, of course, we, as, as I told you, that you have to use carbidolol. In severe NIH, carbidolol. In severe heart failure, carbidolol. But as I told you in the previous slide, I repeat the slide again. That means here, uh, this one. If you are using uh, this, stroke prevention is better. So, but overall, I would say, I don't want to misguide uh, people. I would say carbidolol is the most used beta blocker when you have a NYHA class four, and it is most tolerable, starting with low dose. But if you have a tachycardia with atrial fibrillation, you can still use bisoprolol. If you have normal tensive hypertension, or normal tensive hypertension, in, in talking of, then you have to use bisoprolol and COPD. This is a very important point. If you have a chronic obstructive lung disease, then of course the most safe is bisoprolol with the most cardioselective beta blocker. 
to summarize heart failure is an abnormality of cardiac structure or functions leading to a failure of the heart to deliver sufficient oxygen to metabolizing tissues the most common cause of heart failure is chronic artery disease most common cause the most frequently reported signs in the heart failure are dyspnea edema and cough heart failure has a complex pathophysiology involving activation of two inner hormone system ras renin angiotensin aldosterone and sympathetic nervous system that is why blocking beta blocker will block the sympathetic nervous system which is activated by heart failure and that is why it is useful i will again repeat for the people who are will be we know why it is being used useful but in general if somebody says a drug which is reducing the cardiac contractility is being used in heart failure it is a it is a paradox a drug which is reducing the cardiac contractility is actually being used in the patients of heart failure which has already reduced low ejection fraction why because heart failure has a system which in, 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 it increases and enhances sympathetic nervous system and this is blocked by beta blocker and that is why you have a increased reduction in mortality that means life improvement is there naturally your peptides count counteract the detrimental effects of ras injection as activation i think this was the last slide and this is heart rate and cardiac rhythm relationship uh civis 3 trial yeah this is very important civis 3 hotline session uh civis 3 trial 100 this i want to uh, highlight this 1000 patients 65 years mild to moderate uh, congestive heart failure ejection fraction less than 35 prior to randomization chronic heart failure bisoprolol and versus enalapril this is important civis 2 this is uh, <clears throat> this was done 2005 civis 2 was actually in 1999 while civis 3 is 2005 esc they have shown that combination therapy beta blocker and individual therapy and civis 3 was the first such trial to compare the effects of beta blocker strategy and that of an ace unit first on the hard end points this civis uh, 3 summary the cardiac insufficiency bisoprolol 3 trial examined the optimum order of initiating chm treatment in 1000 patients with stable mildly or mildly moderately symptomatic systolic heart failure and so and this has shown that achieved high dosage of steady drugs particularly bisoprolol has substantially and indeed lower mortality in hospitalization at risk they have reduced the mortality with high dosage the cvst supports a free choice between bisoprolol and enalapril as daily initial therapy was stable mild to moderate systolic heart failure and suggests suggest that early beta blocker reduce the risk of sudden death in first year early beta blocker reduces the death in the first year cvs eld trial titration to target dose of bisoprolol versus carvedilol very important trial because as i was telling you that carvedilol is basically in class 4 heart failure carvedilol is the drug of choice but this is the trial which is published in in 2011 Tar titration to target dose of bisoprolol versus carvedilol in elderly patient with heart failure the cvs3 trial the so bisoprolol is a preferred beta blocker for the treatment of heart failure and then i have to to summarize This is summary. Summary of the bisoprolol is licensed for hypertension, heart failure, and angina. Bisoprolol has once daily dosing for all. This is important. Once daily dosing, although you have metoprolol also, uh, which is sustained release, but this is not sustained release. It's a is a property of the salt that this can be because it has 24 hours full effect. That's why it can be used once daily. Many strengths are available. Dosing and titration of bisoprolol is the same for angina and hypertension. Bisoprolol has a favorable clinical outcome. Bisoprolol has a favorable side effect profile. To conclude, despite some setbacks, beta blockers still come closest to providing all-purpose cardiovascular therapy with a conspicuous absence of any benefit for lipid problem. Conspicuous absence. Since there is a plethora of beta blockers, evidence-based action needed for specific addition. Bisoprolol is closest to being an ideal beta blocker due to its various superior pharmacological, pharmacological profile. I'm not saying other beta blockers there. but because some superior pharmacological profile are there therefore it is it is it can be used in a better way so i think i finished my slides here it was even been a little long presentation i hope i was clearly and audible uh, so make we can interact with the host and other people thank you very much sir thank you for uh, such a enlightening A presentation uh, with this i'll request all my guests tonight to uh, now it is the open session so i'll request all my eminent doctors all guests of the day please ask the question to professor dr vivek gupta sir if you have any 
Actually, it's already too late, 9, 9 p.m. and everything was so crystal clear because of the... Yes. But of course, there are questions always clear. coming in the mind because, you see, the thing which is there in chronic heart failure with heart failure, 20% injection fraction. Still, although bisoprolol has shown almost similar efficacy, but still people are inclined to use carbidolol. But bisoprolol has a very important point is that it's most selective uh, beta-1 blockade. And therefore, it is no, no lipid profile imbalance and uh, it, I, I don't know about the impotency. I think the impotency is also not that much. And masking of hypoglycemia, all other side effects are much less in bisoprolol. Otherwise, beta blocker, my request again, if you see any prescription, if you see any prescription where there is no beta blocker, please add to it. Because many patients do not have that advantage. It is not being used so commonly overall. And once daily doses of bisoprolol is better, and other things, and it is good efficacy, better than dosartan, as we've shown in ARBs. But of course, you have to have monotherapy will not work in heart failure. You have to have combinations of various medicines. Yes, sir, rightly said by you. In case of impotency, also, sir, one or two trial confirms that it has got the least effect in comparison to other beta blockers, sir. Okay, that's good. That's a good news. So once again, uh, one, yes, sir, yes, sir. Once again, I'll request all my eminent doctors tonight. Please ask the question if you have any. Otherwise, we'll have to wrap it up. I think uh, uh, everybody, everything is so clear about this. Uh, there's no need yes, to yes, yes, questions. Yes, it's a very good presentation. So thank yeah. you. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Yes, yes, thoroughly, sir. Thoroughly, it was a very, very knowledgeable uh, presentation. And uh, I am already getting the feedback on WhatsApp from the panelists, doctors, that it is a very good presentation. And they are thanking you also, sir. So thank you very much for the presentation, sir. And I'm, I'm very happy. And uh, please uh, uh, keep on helping us, keep on enlightening us in, in form of knowledge sharing. And whenever we'll get opportunity, sir, we'll once again request you on beta blocker or any other topic where you can help your fellow <laughs> colleagues to have the better understanding about the science and the subjects. May I, may I take another one minute? I would like to share with you uh, that we are doing uh, regular webinars on COVID. Uh, as you have, I think, told that I am also doing Indo-European course on revascularization, which was <coughs> started by us in 2008. And we did uh, international meetings in London, Paris, Amsterdam, Rome, Zurich, and we do regular conclaves in Delhi and other cities. Mm -hmm. But whenever we do in India, we do in Delhi. And now next it was planned in Iceland this year, but there's lockdown, people can't go out. I would like to screen share one or two flyers, flyers which I would like to show uh, regarding uh, the, the webinars which we are doing regularly. And uh, just a minute, I'll show you one of the flyers. Uh, uh, with uh, uh, of the webinar which we did last time for the interest of the audience that so that they know that next time we'll be coming and I would request I will send the flyer to you also so that you can share it to your doctors and they can come. We do also by Zoom meeting and uh, just a minute I'll just share to you the screen sharing. So COVID-19 is important, and this is the webinar which we did last time. I'll show you by screen sharing just a minute. Uh, to zoom. Yeah, sure, yeah. sir. Share screen. Uh, are you able to see it? No, not yet. Just a minute. No, not yet. I'll show you just a minute. Uh, can you see? Yes, sir. Visible. It's visible yes, now. It is coming. Okay. So this is the very webinar which we I told you that we are doing regular COVID-19 and this is 14th in series which we did, and that was held in two days back, July 2018, Saturday. 
and we have various speakers uh, in form of american cardiologist and this was a portugal cardiologist dr jack levin dr rera and president csi elect dr monan dr shokan dr ml gupta he is my father he is assistant he has been actually ex icmr he keeps telling about about uh, various uh, repurpose trials then we had dr gulla dr yashpal sharma you might be aware that he is from tgi chandigarh he was one of the speakers and dr ashdeep but most important that we keep one spiritual message uh, last time it was kalash vijay vargiye then it was vijay santosh then it was mr minister mr ramda thavde this time it was honorable vijay mm. sahas buddha who is the national vice president vijay sahas buddha sir ha so we, yes, we yes, keep yes. Uh, and we also had a sankthan mantri mr vijay santosh kalash vijay vargiye saab earlier ramda thavde health yes. minister uttar pradesh yes, yes. health minister haryana at this time there were two people yes. honorable som prakash who is the minister so we keep a spiritual message and all is available on youtube if you uh, i request all of you if you have time please subscribe to youtube dr vivek gupta cardiologist dr vivek gupta cardiologist and yes sure sir uh, so you please uh, see all the webinars they are more mostly so covid is my passion so i know i have learned a lot and this is something where people have to keep learning every day we have i have treated myself alone more than 50 patients in covid And today also I have lot patients admitted and they're directly under my care. Oh, oh great we, news! We have respiratory physician also, uh, which are associated, um, and this is serious problem. And I request uh, through this webinar also that uh, till the vaccine is not coming, and I have spoken lot about uh, this thing during various uh, interviews on television, and I would just mm. tell you that uh, one last thing I'll try to share, which is something which I always feel proud of myself. Uh, that um, on 26th march and 29th march i was on television at that time the lockdown had just started if you remember the lockdown started on 24th march and um, but there was no as such uh, uh, guideline that everybody should wear the mask if they are going for essentials outside their houses that means on the road if you are going yes, to take your yes, yes. bread uh, to the mother dairy or milk or, or people who are although it was lockdown but lot of people were still coming out healthcare people So at that on 26 March I spoke on TV on 29 March there was a major problem mm -hmm. of Anand Vihar terminal if you remember if you live in Delhi that people started migrating to the terminal and there was a mockery of uh, lockdown at that time so I told that everybody should wear a mocha you know a mocha so I was very happy that even honorable yes, prime yes, minister yes, it was crowded it was crowded it crowded, was crowded very crowded so I was on TV at that time on TV nine Bharat Varsh. I told the anchor that police cannot do anything. You can't do anything. You have to request everybody to cover the face. That's all. Or sabki baat mask to hota nahi hai. I requested them to cover the face with the help of rumal or angocha. I used the word angocha, and that became a common word when Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister himself, wore the gamcha uh, during a live show a uh, few few days later in April first week. Yes. So I have been following this COVID. So next time when we have a webinar, I'll spend ten minutes on COVID also. because lot of things are coming up still huge mortality 34 31000 patients per day and i'm not criticizing anybody but the testing which we are doing the government testing by which we are saying 30000 what delhi saying 15000 1500 only is rapid antigen test the efficacy oh, sure sir the sensitivity is too low so i will talk to this just time later i'm stop sharing the screen it is too late we'll talk on covid also when we have next webinar Sure, sir. Sure, we'll. I will surely associate with you, sir. And I must tell you how much I am happy, sir. Today evening, late around nine thirty, now nine twenty. So much energy, full of passion. A young person like you, though you are very senior, but to me you are very young, sir. This Thank much you very energy, much for the compliment. This much energy is very difficult at this time after doing so many work, and especially I am very happy that you are associated with the people to to, to whom I love, sir. I I cannot say much on the the public platform, but you. Yeah, can I, I understand, understand because in the I yes, I, I had yes. a previous. I'll give another thirty seconds. I had a previous webinar seven to eight thirty. I'm just finishing in between. I took one tea, a chai, a little si, ya rakha hua. So in that question, the the host was asking all my experiences with Honorable PM. So I spent about five minutes, but of course next time I will share my. I must have had interactive with him twenty times or more than that. During the last ten years of my association, recently a old one, so I shared all my experiences, and next time I'll also share with you in next webinar. 
Sir, I will personally come to meet you or I will call you and let's make a big event, sir. But these 20, 30 doctors webinar is not good for doctors like you. I want to plan 1000 or 500 doctors webinar with you, sir. Uh, give me some time, sir. My team, Shivendra is there, Deepak is there. We'll do something big, sir, now. This is not looking at your energy, sir. This is nothing. 20, 30 doctors is nothing. I will plan something like 500, 1000 doctors, sir. Give me some time. Okay, that topic of your choice, uh, topic of your, your choice, sir. I don't want to promote my product on this platform. I want to use this energy, sir, which is there, vibrant, and you people like you can change many things, sir. I, I'm really, I'm really thankful, sir, and I'm thank to the God that today evening we could interact with you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, I, we'll I, make I a big program, sir. I received we'll a, a call. Program. I received a call from one of the senior ministers, without naming him. That yes. what are your views on lockdown and unlockdown? And that was at the behest of uh, the senior most people in India. So I was very mm -hmm. happy to hear and I had a 10 minutes conversation. And when I when, when you come, we'll share that also. Yeah, great, sir. Great, great. Great mind like you only, sir, helping Indian government and Indian economy, Indian healthcare system. Many things, sir. One person cannot make a change. People like you contribute small, small things which become a very big things for, for a country like us, sir. So thank you very much for everything, sir. And special thanks for today's, uh, this vibrant presentation, sir. And uh, from team JB Chemical, from team Selakar, I'm really thankful to you, sir. And I will positively interact with you very soon, sir, with some big plan. Okay, we'll talk tomorrow on phone also. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. Anand, you want to add anything? Right. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. I'm Anand Pal. Thank you very much for your wonderful presentation, sir. Definitely, we are hoping in future a big one, sir. I mean, a big program with you. So definitely, we'll come and we'll uh, meet you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. And, and good Anand, night, sir. Is, Anand, what is your designation? Sir, I am regional manager. Sir. I have met you there uh, several times. Uh, I am regional manager. Shivendra is the area manager. Yeah, yeah. And RP, <laughs> RP, RP, where are you based? Bo Boss is based at Delhi okay. and he is covering a half of India, sir. Okay, Arme. Yeah, yeah, I think we have met. <laughs> we have met JV Kamini. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I, have met you. I have met you. Yes. So it was sir, if, if, if anybody is working in cardiology me, without meeting you, it is not that easy, sir, to survive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank, thank you, sir. you, sir. Good night, thank sir. You, sir. Thank Good you night, very sir. much, sir. Okay.